Hi guys and girls. In this episode, we want to continue with our Toolmakers Clamp Kit. Today we want to tackle the clips, the retaining clips on the top of a clamp that retain the captive screw. Here's our brass stock. We're making two clamps. That's enough stock for two retaining clips. Sheet six of the drawing package. Retaining clips. 964 hole for the screw that fastens the clips down, a uh, through hole, 3 8 and a counter bore at a half an inch. I'm going to uh, blue up my stock here and uh, we'll leave the two pieces together. until we get these holes laid out. I don't know how a click spring does it. My surface plate is kind of buried right now, so I'm going to use this nice bit of plate that I have. sure everything's nice and clean. Zero out my height gauge there, looks good. Overall height of my stock is 0.504. All materials in the kit are like when I say the jaw stock is half inch square that's a nominal value. You have to actually measure it and do your layouts accordingly. This is 0.504, so I'll adjust my height gauge to 0.252. I uh, deburred the, uh, the stock and cleaned it up a bit with a fine stone. Okay, now I'm going to divide the stock in half height-wise. I've squared up the ends roughly with a file. That's close enough in this case. 0 .2, 2 0.033. So we'll divide that in half. Let me set my gauge. I'll be right by. 2.033. One point oh one six. 
So I've got a, uh, a V block here I'm just using to help me hold my stock vertical. There's our center line. I'm going to now zero my height gauge. This is the reference we just put on the work. We're going to, once we get our mark laying out done, we're going to cut this in half. This will be the larger uh, bore and counter bore and our smaller screw hole will be a quarter inch off of that center line. So I'm just going to adjust my height gauge to 2.50 right there. Lock that down. Mark my work. Flip my work. Mark it there. And now uh, I'm going to lay out this three quarter inch dimension. Change my height gauge to 0 0.750. Digital uh, equipment, you can zero at any point, it's nice. This is tedious, though. Point seven five zero. Flip my work. There we have it, four good marks. We're done with the height gauge, that can go away. We're done with our V block, that can go away. Everything I show in my videos is just suggestions. There's many, many ways to Skin this cat. I've got my optimizer on. Center punch there. Oh, that one doesn't look so good. Those aren't bad. The clearance hole for the screw gives us a little forgiveness. Uh, next thing we want to do, we want to enlarge these two outer holes to 964. Work on these two holes. I'm just going to beef up these center holes a bit.
Let's go to the mill drill. Okay, we're getting ready to drill our 964 holes on the circled center points there. We have our tooling pallet here, whatever you want to call it. It's a piece of cast iron with some threaded holes and some through holes. I centered up the spindle roughly on the through hole there, so we don't drill into it. I got my table locked in all directions. This is just a, a pin. I turned a 60 degree point on it and hardened it. There's a nice bit of tool steel. So we'll use that pin to find our center punch. Right there. Lock the spindle. Use our three inch machinist clamp. Link in the description. Comes as a kit, of course, same as your toolmaker's clamp. And we will just secure that down snugly to the to our pallet. Sanity check, we're looking good. Center drill for starters. This is going to be noisy. They're vibrating. They're so excited. There's our center drill. Our 964. And same on the other end. I'll just deburr this so we can be sure it's sitting flat on the on our pallet. Okay, we'll switch back to our pin. Right there, lock my spindle, clamp it down, check that we are secure, seems good, double check our center, looks good, center drill,
Next operation is to split our stock in half. We found the center there earlier. We'll split it in half. Okay, back at the bench. First thing I'm going to do is extend my line a little bit more here. Three inch machinist clamp. Not sure how sharp this saw is, but we'll give it a try. a nice edge. Now we're going to glue these on to a piece of stock in the and, and uh, turn these turn the larger diameter in the lathe. We're going to glue these on to a piece of round stock. So it's important that it be well deburred on the back side. So I have a fine file here. I'm just going to clean that up. That's a bit coarse, actually. I have a stone here as well. Just take any nasties off of there. We're handling it, so we don't want any surprises. And that back needs to be burr free so it will sit on the stock in the lathe nicely. Okay, I've been through the junk bin and I found this uh, nasty little piece of aluminum. It may be nasty, but she's just ideal for what we want. Let's go over to the lathe. Okay, we'll check up our scrap stock in the three jaw here. And we'll face this in nice. That has given us a very nice finish. Get rid of this stabby bit. 
Okay, we're going to be gluing this on, so we'll clean everything with some acetone. That should be clean, that's virgin aluminum. Clean the back side of our stock. Our D bird stock. Now, for adhesive, I have some thick GA here, CA. Okay, I'm just going to apply. A liberal amount of CA. I think it's time to get some new bring in my tailstock with live center. Actually it doesn't matter if it's live or not. with the center and using our center mark, our center punch and set that up like that time for a cup of coffee while that cures up back soon Okay, the glue has set on our setup here. I have our brass stock glued to the mandrel. I have the, uh, doing the uh, counter bore first, the half inch end mill here. I have it snug against the work and my graduated dial on my tailstock quill is set to zero. So we're going to plunge a sixteenth of an inch deep. We just broke through one side and to the end and we actually were so close to this side that we have a bulge there. That's great. Okay, we're going to uh, plunge now with our 3 8 end mill. Let me set that up. Okay, we have our 3 8 end mill. Probably be safer to drill this, but here goes. There we have it. That's it. Now, to get that off, I'm 
to get that off I'm going to give it a whack with a parallel here a, a sharp crack I have my little mini brass hammer here let me move you guys Okay, a sharp wrap. There we have it. I think that'll clean up just nice. So I'm just checking the thickness of our counter bore. Time for a battery in my caliper. I'm seeing 0 0 0.066065. That's not bad. Two or three thousandths off what we were shooting for. That's nothing wrong with that. Okay, let's trim this up as per the drawings. You can, of course, give this a quick face. I wouldn't worry about trying to clean that glue off. Just quick face and you're ready for your second clip. Okay, we've got our bore and our counter bore and our screw hole done. We're ready to trim this to length now. Uh, 13 16 so I have my height gauge set I have the back side of the part blue uh, that's giving me a reasonable mark there I can work with that now with the square beef it up a bit Okay, I'm just going to beef up this line so I can see it easier. This is uh, UHMW, 3 inch machinist clamp, link in the description. Holds our work nicely. This is a, I don't know what you call this kind of saw. It's uh, sold in the hobby shops for the RC uh, airplane crowd. Works a treat on brass and aluminum. Now we've gone past center with that cut, so we have a little bit of filing to do. We want to flatten out.
can remove any sharp edges. We'll uh, round off these back corners and uh, ease some of these edges and get back to you. There we have it guys, our two clips ready for work. We'll uh, visit them again when the assembly time comes. There's a good start on our Toolmakers class. Thanks for watching.